Well, hello everybody. It's been a number of months since I've done my last video. So, we're going to take a look at another look at this HP 3335A. It is a uh, synthesizer slash level generator. I've had this uh, instrument for a while, and I went to turn it on here the other day, and it's having an issue. The uh, unlock light is coming on, and then turning off, and coming back on for a little bit, then going back out again. So, I'm guessing there's an issue with the reference oscillator. So, uh, I'm going to dig this thing out, put it on the bench... We'll pop the covers off and we'll take a look inside and see if it's you know something that's going to be simple like uh, reseating a connector or whatever because uh, it was working just fine a week prior to that anyway uh let me get this thing dug out and we'll see what there is to see well here we go we have the co top cover off so anyway back here of course you know we got the power supply Cooling fan, attenuator, and right here, of course, is the reference oscillator. And basically, it just hooks up right there with that uh, small SMA uh, cable and snakes around and goes all the way back to here, where it comes out the bottom here. And then you hook up this feed through and it comes back in and into the uh, uh, the main signal generator. And these nice little RF tight boxes, boy this thing is be a, a hassle to work on if I had to tackle that part. And I actually do have a second one of these where the fault is in here and not anywhere else. So what I think I'll do is I'll hook it up to the scope and uh, We'll see what we got for output on the back and uh, we'll work from there. Alrighty, ready to go. One thing I noticed <laughs> when I was hooking this up, getting it ready to observe on the scope, that the output BNC is loose. I don't know if that would really have much to do since the uh, it's basically a coax cable running all the way to the back. But anyway, let's... Uh, Turn the power on, and let's see what happens here. Yeah, we do have a... Yeah, the signal's down quite a ways. Now that goes a little bit. Right down in here. No, it's not changing nothing there, so I'll let it warm up, and uh, we'll go from there. Well, it looks like I might have a bad reference. <clears throat> this is how it normally looks, and of course I'm not going to catch it when it fails, probably. But uh, it basically just collapses down to nothing, then comes back on. See, it's starting to go a little bit. So... I guess I'm probably going to have to just wind up replacing this uh, this oscillator. But uh, it looks like it's uh, not too difficult to remove. It's just on a board down in there. There's uh, one single power wire. There's a coax cable. And then there's no other cables. No other wires. It's just held in there with uh, two screws on this side, one on this side. I'd have to remove uh, this bracket to get to it. And it should come out. And it's just a nothing but 10.544B, which uh, should be interchangeable with a 10.811. I've also got uh, another 10.544, but it's in another instrument. Yeah, there we go, right there. It just failed. So when, it ha when that happens, I get the unlock light, and then eventually it uh, hops back again. So... I will dig a little bit into this and uh, see if we can get this thing working again. Well, guys, it looks like I had a bad reference. This is the one that was in it. And to get it out is pretty simple. Uh, you remove the bottom cover and there's the access holes are right there where the, the posts are. 
So I dropped in this uh, this 10811, and I'm just letting it warm up. And uh, so I guess I'll have to. Uh, yeah, it's a little different than my other uh, 10.544. Oh boy, plastic's coming off of it. So anyway, I'll let that warm up, and I'll uh, run it through its paces, and uh, we'll see if that solves this issue. Alrighty. So hey, if you ever need to work on one of these and need to replace the uh, <laughs> uh, the reference oscillator, if it's got the uh, the 10 uh, the 10.544. You take the bottom off, and it's these two screws right there, readily accessible from the bottom panel. Take those out, and uh, that oven will just come right out. So, I'll let it uh, sit a little bit longer. I just uh, going to finish up uh, putting the bottom back on, and uh, I'll power it up, and uh, I'm going to have to let it... Uh, Stay plugged in for about 24 hours, and then I'll slide the top off and do a frequency alignment on it. So, uh, be right back. Well, guys, I couldn't really ask for anything much better than that. That's it is creeping ever so slow. I think I'm going to call that good. Now the thing's been sitting a while. <sighs> Could certainly put it back into service. These are pretty nice level generators. Uh, I don't use it a lot, but I do uh, do use it for various uh, purposes, including uh, repairing some of my uh, other gear over here, where it calls for it in the service manual. But it's really nice and convenient when you have this uh, rotary encoder here, and you can step as low as one millihertz increments, or you can sit there and go all the way over to. You know, 10 megahertz increments so you got a lot of steps that you can step in anywho thanks for watching guys uh, just kind of just rambling here but I'm glad I got this thing working uh, trying to find uh, these on eBay it can be a bit of a challenge some of them are in fairly decent condition but Unfortunately, a lot of them have seen pretty rough service and they've got problems. I've got, like I said, I've got a parts unit that I bought uh, that has the, uh, a, a, the newer uh, CPU in it. Everything else is the same, so I bought it just for a parts unit. Unfortunately, it doesn't have the, uh, the same high stability option that this one originally had, so I couldn't rob that one. So at least I had a spare 10811 10, laying around, which is a little bit better than the one that was in there anyway. Well, anyway, guys, uh, thanks for watching again, and uh, we'll uh, get some more videos up soon. See ya.